Hello and welcome, my name is Matei Jan, but you can call me Retro, and this is the pixel art, Retro Nader pixel art news of the previous week. It's trying to be a series, but it's probably gonna be a one-time thing, so uh, yeah, it's just a test. Cheers. So these are games that I talk about on my blog that aren't out yet, but I just like to talk about them. Skytorn comes from the people who are currently developing Celeste, and it was kind of put on hold while they're working on Celeste. And while Celeste is a precision platformer, Skytorn is more of a general exploration, metroidvania, I would guess, I have to say, with really cool pixel art from Saint11, who is on Patreon, giving a lot of tutorials which you should definitely check out and be a subscriber of if you haven't. Yeah, that's Skytorn. Next up we have a look at Bravery and Greed. Uh, not really known game, it's been er very early in development, but it has co-op multiplayer, which is a rare feature in platformers, and it also has this cool archer character, which I also haven't seen that much. Uh, so these are two new fresh things coming in Bravery and Greed. Last but not least, this is a look at the Screenshot Saturday, the previous one, not this one that just happened as, uh, as indie games look at it. Usually not that many pixel art games feature there, but there is one called Project Warlock by Buckshot Software. It's coming out late 2017. I just want to show you a screenshot. It's pretty cool. It's 3D, but it has pixel art textures and this crazy looking GUI on the bottom. Gives me those uh, Wolfenstein 3D vibes. This week's game of the week was Galaxy of Pen Paper, a role-playing game from Behold Studios, but it's unlike other role-playing games because it also simulates the experience going around the game, meaning kind of imagine you're playing Dungeons and Dragons with your friends and here you're actually seeing your friends around the table and they're the thing that they're talking about and you have your Dungeon Master, which in this case is a Galaxy Master. The game just came out last week. Their previous game, Knights of Pen and Paper, was a huge hit on mobile which is where I fell in love with this uh, game and this one has just as many pop culture references. There's no fourth wall. The fourth wall is broken and that and the interaction between that is super fun. Another game that released this week is The Dark Side Detective. I've written about the game previously on the blog and now it's finally out. It's uh, an adventure game very much like along the Twin Peaks environment and you it's paranormal activity, very low resolution a lot of good humor and uh, yeah check it out if you like little detective paranormal stories and point-and-click adventures shout out of the week goes to eh good enough it's Andrew McPherson here's his uh, tumblr and Andrew loves to attend game jams I really love his username or moto which is yeah good enough because that's what you need if you're trying to make games at the jams. So here's some of examples. In this one, your life is your ammo. That's the team and they made it. So whenever you shoot, you lose your life and then you can get your life back. The one that I posted about on my blog is Shining Dragon Showdown at Sunset Against Shadows, where you play as the enemies instead of as the wave of enemies. There we go, that's Andrew. He loves game jams. It says right there on the, in the description. Moving on, that was a shout out. Okay, gaming is done, now let's take a look at the pixel art illustration world. Pixel art is not only using video games, people use it just for the art style alone, and today we have a very rare thing. It's an interview with the artist 1041 U. He's a Japanese artist living in Kyoto and a lot of people on Tumblr love him. From his popularity on Tumblr, he's also popular on Twitter, he's popular everywhere. He is one of the most well-known new age, this kind of like post-sword and sorcery pixel artist. He has a Patreon, but that's as personal as it gets. He ne never gives interviews, we don't really know who he is. Uh, this is the first interview, it's super fun. Here's his setup, super interesting stuff. Uh, he's a super funny guy, the interviewer is a super funny guy. Definitely check out the interview with 1041 Triple U. Pixel Joint posts their top pixel art from their site, from their gallery every month and a week or two ago they posted the best art for Stone June and they actually updated their user interface a few months ago uh, and now you can actually just hover and see the artworks. I'm gonna show you four of my favorite ones. So one of the artists that's been making some waves now on Pixel Joint is Yes I Do and his art looks amazing, very clean few colors. So he's one of the artists that's working on a game called Bunker. 
which we can see here, which is another one of his works. I've been uh, following this game for a while now, uh, especially when I'm trying to learn Russian. Another one that I really love is this illustration called Mini Batman and the little well-known name in the pixel art scene, especially on pixel joint, here with a little nice, uh, cute little Batmobile. Last but not least, this little medieval knight with a flaming sword by Cannon Breed. I love this guy. I met him on, at the Game Developers Conference. He's the artist on Moon Man, helping out Ben Porter on the game. And here he made this, I don't know, is it Pixel Daniel? No, it's a commission piece. Look at that, it's beautiful. In pixel art related news, a very cool computer or gadget or handheld gaming device came out from Kano Computing. And last week I already looked at their Kano computer kit. The computer kit was uh, on Kickstarter in 2013. Super successful, the most funded educational product at the time. In 2016, they announced three new projects, camera, speaker, and the Pixel Kit. And here's the Pixel Kit. Pixel Kit just came out a few weeks ago. And yeah, it's like a 16 by eight pixel big handheld device. And you actually, you put it together yourself. And, uh, and then when you turn it on, you can make this little fun stuff like I illustrated here in this little GIF animation. The limited amount of pixels actually forces you that you're actually gonna finish something, you're not gonna go too big, and it's super easy to code with these little blocks. Here's an example. I made a tracker for the International Space Station, which you see here. I made a little Earth in 16 by 8 pixels, and there's a red blinking dot for it, uh, where the ISS is, and this is all the code that needs to happen. It's pretty much taking the longitude and latitude converting it from degrees to the pixel, and then there's a little blinker that goes on and off. Super fun, super educational to learn with this. Also, still going, the Kano has a giveaway, raffle, there's a lot of ways how you can enter this, you have a chance to get a Pixel Kit for free. There's also a code for five off, um, and I think maybe even free shipping. Check that out. If you're trying to learn how to code for yourself or if you have kids and you want them to get interested in computer science, think about a computer kit and a pixel kit from Kano Computing. Okay, this is now the DIY section, do it yourself, uh, where we talk about if you want to do pixel art on your own, a really cool article came out about alternatives to Adobe Photoshop if you want to make pixel art. One of the main ones is Pixel Edit, which has really good support for tiles, so if you're working on tile-based games, definitely check out Pixel Edit. Next up is AC Pride. it's designed in pixel art. A lot of people love their animation tools, which are super useful. Pisco, why this one's interesting is because it's online. You just go to pixel, piscoapp.com, I think, and you can just start pis piscaling, pixeling in your browser uh, for free. Super useful and convenient. GIMP, it's a free alternative to Photoshop. The only, it's open source and the closest as you can get to Photoshop's uh, set of features, not only for pixel art, but for photography or image editing and everything. And uh, they actually use my uh, YouTube tutorial, how to use GIMP, which thank you guys, I feel flattered. So yeah, GIMP, I've been using it for years, definitely very, very recommended. And last but not least, there's Krita, which I don't personally actually know, uh, but it's a free program. On a related note, Pixel Joint reports that Graphics Gale has now become freeware, which is super cool. A lot of this is like an old school program that everyone recommended in the past. If you wanted to do pixel art, if you wanted to have a tool that's pixel art specific, use Graphics Gale. And Pixel Joint also has an interview with the developer of Graphics Gale Tomoya Kikuchi. Two more things in the do-it-yourself section. We're gonna look at tutorials that came out on Patreon, two of the most helpful artists on Patreon that share their insights and process with us. One is Pedro Medeiros, also known as Saint Eleven, and this week's tutorial from him is Fabric and Flags. Check it out. And there's a newcomer on the Patreon scene, Hank Nieborg. Uh, this is his fifth pixel art tutorial and it's about craters, in this particular case, on the moon's surface. So this has been pixel art news of the previous week and a little bit more from before. Thank you for watching. Uh, Returnator, follow on Facebook, subscribe on... I don't know what people do about like the, the things and like and subscribe because it helps. It helps me and it shares the stuff to the internet. Alright, thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.